in Russia, was there an organized or just a, a group movement of, we need to change our outlook? Well, people had to do whatever they had to in order to survive. And that included uh, having to do business with people they did not trust. In absence of any centralized authority, of any sort of law and order structure, doing business with strangers is very dangerous. And therefore, everybody had to have mafia protection. So two business counterparties each had to have mafia protection. And these mafia people, of course, their biggest priority is not getting killed. So they will adjudicate any deal in whatever manner necessary to prevent open fighting, warfare breaking out. And that was the basis on which a lot of business was transacted. And eventually, people like Putin realized that there's, there was a market in this, that the government could get involved in this and, and step in and be a, you know, a bigger, better, cheaper, more effective mafia. And, and then the country really took off. So is Russia um, now is it a place that you are optimistic about? Oh, absolutely. I think Russia will do remarkably well as soon as there, there's still, um, as, as long as there are still industrial economies around the world that, um, that have a use for oil and natural gas. And is that, would you say that's at the expense of democracy? I mean, obviously it's a different brand of democracy there, uh, no democracy whatsoever. Or, you know, do you feel that the, do the Russians get like they want their government as is, or um, the opposition seems small and fragmented? Well, to be honest, I find the Russian brand of democracy quite nauseating. But then, um, I'm not I'm not a big fan of politics in any case. Um, it, it it's a system with a great number of shortcomings, and and one of them is is that you know it doesn't really function so well as a representative democracy, but. Um, as a system of bureaucratic control, it is proving to be quite effective. Max, you uh, have been on Russia today. Yeah, great TV network in Russia. Sure. <laughs> and is that, uh, is that uh, wholly independent, and can you say what you want on it? And did you ever feel uh, pressure from... Uh, no, we haven't had forces? any editorial pressure from any of the networks we've worked with. Um, with Al Jazeera, English, Russia Today, France 24, with the exception of BBC. BBC uh, put two executives in our, in our office every week and gave us very strict guidelines, editorial guidelines, and were no, uh, not shy about censoring material. And were you based in Russia for Russia Today or based in... No, we, uh, we did the show in Paris and now we do it out of London. But actually, the show is produced by an American company, the Associated Press. Uh, well, I'm a co-producer. The Associated Press is the other producer of the show. We then sell our material to outlets like RT, uh, Press TV, which is uh, Iranian television, and uh, we have, you know we have offers out to Canada, America, Australia, all English-speaking markets around the world. But our message is that the banks are fucked. So none of these places where the banks are in control, utterly like America or Britain, want to hear that stuff. So we end up on other. Uh, networks where they're open to this uh, message and we have an audience around the world that uh, now gets the message. So when we predicted, for example, that Iceland was going to collapse a year before Iceland collapsed, only Al Jazeera broadcast that film. So the people in Iceland uh, were not privy to the fact that their banks were engaged in massive fraud, massive insider trading, massive corruption, and that they were about to collapse because they don't like to hear that stuff. So is, is one of the optimistic things, for example, for you, Dimitri, the, a, a, a completely independent media almost paradoxically in a country where, like it's not all in it, but you have something like Russia today, do you see that as a, as, as some, a cause for optimism? Completely, over, uh, completely independent is overstating it by quite a margin. There's, um, there are very strict limits to what you're allowed to say about Russian politics. The political discourse in Russia is very rigidly controlled and people like it that way. Because uh, they, they think that it's a bunch of nonsense and they don't like rabble-rousers. So that's actually a fairly popular matter with most people in Russia. Because they, they just mistrust politics. But on the other hand, you can say anything you want about the rest of the world. <laughs> That's where Max comes in, yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's not, it's all in English. So there are other outlets that have opinions about Russia. And uh, it's in English, and people are going to weigh all this information under their conclusion. Dimitri's been a guest on our show many times, and we've talked about lots of different things. and. Uh, but it's all, what's great in this new era is that all these states have English-speaking global networks. So there's no, nothing is lost in translation because English is a dominant 
uh, language, and people can, can decide. And, and we're presenting, especially economics and finance, your ten, and the banking, the global banking system, the stories carry all over the world. So they have the World Bank and the IMF are active all over the world. They're connected to all these big money center banks. So we can present these stories, and uh, that's what to us. If Russia had a very concentrated uh, money center bank system, like in the UK or the US, uh, it, then the dynamics would be different. So it, it's, it's the thing about Russia, it's, its banking system is, obviously it's different, it, it doesn't, it's not linked to politics as much, is, would, that, would that be fair? It's linked to politics, um, but in a, in a reverse uh, relationship. Um, in the EU, money controls politics to a large extent, and in Russia, politics controls money. So uh, the Kremlin might decide that there are too many banks, that, you know, Putin, Putin could, yes, uh, we need fewer <laughs> banks. And so just break them open and do this and form new banks. They did that with the airlines. They just decided there were too many airlines one day. And a few weeks later, there were fewer airlines. <laughs> <laughs> the, the banks are not as developed in Russia as these other locations. See, Russia would aspire to be raked over the coals by me on my show because it would mean that they've achieved a certain status of banking kleptocracy. But so they're, they're not good enough they teams have, for you to consider. They haven't them. gotten that's, that's yeah. to the UK level or the American level. <laughs> they're still in the backwaters yeah. in terms of banking fraud. So they would aspire to be at that level, level A, primo level. And uh, like, uh, for whatever reason, uh, the Russian, you know, the political system controls the banks. Is that is that the answer? If you know what I mean. If, if you obviously the political system has to be non-corrupt itself. But the level of so yours, there's not as much banking fraud in Russia if the banks aren't as developed and they're well the ruble collapsed not too long ago so this has had a profound impact on the country and so they've been on the receiving end of the global banking initiatives and um, so they're still digging out of a hole from that that collapse and um, so th again it's if you say is it political or or banking or financial you have to, then you have to consider the global banking situation and who's really like the problem here it's been discussed in economics is that Ireland even the Prime Minister says we've lost our economic um, independence uh, so what does that mean that means he's taking orders from the Troika from 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 other institutions outside of the country and that's true for countries all over the world they're all deferring to these other global institutions and organizations so and that's a global phenomenon okay so it seems like from Russia there's the cultural reset do you think that that is a necessary thing in crisis that personally, uh, as well as the kind of element of the politics relationship with banks, but going back to the culture, do you think that's something that's necessary here, that as Irish people or other people going through crises in, economics, in their economic situation, they have to actually personally think about how to react to it? Uh, I believe so. What, what happened in Russia is that um, the older generation, the people who accrue um, power and authority over time, um, basically it came to be regarded as insane in a short period of time. Loopy old people who don't know what's going on. And only the young people who uh, participated in this chaotic new economy actually could make decisions and, and get things done. And uh, I imagine that if something similar like to that happened in Ireland today, that everybody under the age of 30 was suddenly empowered to make all of the decisions in charge of the entire country, and everybody over 30 was just sidelined starting tomorrow, then I would assume that people would stop, young people would stop leaving Ireland, because there would, some, there would be something for them to do here. Get drunk. <laughs> well, they, they do that first. But once they sober up, maybe they move on to other things.